always beautiful. Hi, I'm Christy Blatchford, and I'm the Quartz columnist for the National Post and Post Media. But I speak to you today as a rink rat, a long-time rink rat. Uh, my late father ran two hockey rinks, one in northwestern Quebec and one in Toronto, and I spent my life, the first 16 or 17 years of my life, uh, hanging around and working at those hockey rinks. So I have a real affection for the national game. In amateur hockey in this province um, this season, because of an Ontario Human Rights Commission complaint uh, dating back to 2013, the complaint came from a transgendered hockey player in Oshawa who said he effectively had been outed because he was born a girl, identified as a boy, the, he was not welcome in the boys' room. Last season, uh, Ontario minor hockey coaches received online gender training, which was delivered by a gal Canada. It's an LBGTQ um, advocacy group. And this season, the coaches, all of whom are volunteers, every single one. This season, the coaches are to, uh, at the beginning of the season, have a formal uh, sort of preseason chat with their players. They are to have what's called a mandatory pronoun check-in, whereby the coach would say something like, hi, I'm George Smith. Um, my pronouns are him and himself um, and then ask all the players and some of them can be as young as five or six to say their name and give their pronouns of choice and the Ontario Hockey Federation is going to conduct random spot checks to make sure that the pronoun and check-in is being done etc and I I think it's first of all regrettable because of the emphasis on difference as opposed to an emphasis on sort of oneness if you will that we are all the same. And secondly, because I think it's unnecessary. I saw so many good, gentle, kind people in hockey. Coaches who give up, you know, weekends and a couple of nights a week, often when they don't even have a child on the team, to coach kids because they love children, they love the game, and they, were, they are able and were able uh, to handle difference in a usually in a very good way now I mean not always obviously the the boy in Oshawa is a pretty good example I think he had a he must have had a you know a not very good coach I don't know but most of the coaches I know are able to handle this sort of thing you know I think of every hockey rink I've ever been in there is always one outlier who is terrifically welcome and accepted in the hockey rink, if nowhere else. In my hometown, it was a, a kid called the Wire Boy. He had a, a length of coiled wire, and he would just twirl it all the time. And at the rink, nobody made fun of him. Nobody, you know, belittled him. Nobody asked why he was twirling a wire. People just accepted him. And that's the beauty of the rink, is that you go there because you have one thing in common, your love of the game. As a sort of, uh, I don't know, a real perfect example of what I mean, the rink in Humboldt, Saskatchewan, which is where earlier this year, of course, um, their junior team was almost wiped out in that awful bus crash. The hockey rink there is named after the town's version of the wire boy, a very simple guy who for as long, almost as long as he lived was known to generations of hockey players. He tied their skates, he held the door open for them when they were going on and off the ice, he stood behind the bench, um, and they did him the ultimate, the penultimate honor really of naming the town arena, which is the center of all activity in a small town, uh, after this fellow. And on the night of the vigil for the the hockey players who had died and were injured in the crash, when the whole town came to the rink, uh, he was the only person called out by name and asked to stand. He's 82 years old now and he lives in a nursing home, I think north of Humboldt. And the, the greatest and the most telling thing about the game is that Darcy Hogan, the late coach of the Broncos, the Humboldt Broncos, not long before this horrible crash, had taken his team to visit this guy in his nursing home because he wanted them to know how important this man had been 
throughout the whole history of the team and to get to know them a little bit and to love them. And that's what I think happens most of the time and would even with a transgendered hockey player, I think to design a whole new bunch of formal rules for a population which is at, at its greatest is, is estimated to be 0.7% of the adult population is an insult to the great game.